In the center of Edinburgh, Scotland, just two minutes' walk from the busy intersection called Palmerston Place, you'll find St. Mary's Episcopal Cathedral, Mother Church of the Diocese of Edinburgh in the Scottish Episcopal Church. Just next to the cathedral building is St. Mary's Music School, Scotland's only specialist music school. It serves as the choir school of the cathedral. St. Mary's Cathedral is unique in Scotland for maintaining a tradition of daily Anglican choral services. In 1978, St. Mary's Cathedral became the first in the UK to offer scholarships to girls as well as to boys to sing as trebles. Here they assemble in June 2006 for one of their many weekly rehearsals with their choir master, Simon Nemensky, organist and master of the music at St. Mary's. All 70 music students at St. Mary's have shown exceptional gifts in music as a prerequisite for admittance. Those with best vocal skills also add being a chorister to their schedule of activities. They're just normal kids, but in rehearsal and performance, they earn marks as high as the most experienced of professional musician. The choristers rehearse here for recording sessions for a new CD on the American Pro Organo label. Every student in the school, a chorister or instrumentalist, is auditioned and given a place on, on merit, basically, on, on ability and potential as well. The Scottish system has from P5 to S2, which is from age 8 to 14, effectively. We have some choristers as young as 8. We have currently 19 choristers out of a school of 70. P5 and upwards they have um, one instrument and when they reach P7 around the age of 11 and 12 they have two instruments and they have half hour lessons a week. They also have a chance to do chamber music and they have a junior orchestra once a week as well. So not only do they have instrumental lessons but their practice is also supervised as well. So they're kept very busy musically in school and out of school. Next door, in the cathedral proper, organists prepare the choral accompaniments. The accompaniments, played upon the cathedral's 1878 vintage Father Henry Willis organ, have organ registration demands as complex as a full orchestral score. Here, assistant organist Duncan Ferguson is assisted by organ scholar Rory Sutherland. For the recording, the choir sings not from their traditional place in the choir stalls, but rather from a concert position near the center of the nave. Trebles, singing soprano, are joined by the 13 adults of the choir who sing alto, tenor, and bass. One of the adults singing alto is a young woman who was, at one time, a child chorister at St. Mary's. Traditionally, adults in Anglican cathedral choirs have been exclusively male. Her presence, therefore, has set a precedent. The chorister is Judy Brown. I am, well I'm the first, definitely the first female alto here um, and in, I think it's, we're describing it as the first female alto in the Anglican choral tradition with a daily service which is very specific. I was 11 when I started 
um, and it was a bit of a baptism of fire. I'd never really done much music before and um, went to the school and got um, instrumental tuition and then daily services at the cathedral which were quite an experience and um, the musical education you get and the um, training really is invaluable. You can't explain how much it's held me in good stead for um, studying music now and um, hopefully pursuing a career in that. It's, it's, um, these kids get such an advantage, they've no idea how lucky they are until they leave. It's really fantastic. The choir of St. Mary's Cathedral is heard frequently on BBC radio and television, and they maintain a busy schedule of concerts. During summer music festivals in Edinburgh, when they are in residence, they sing to capacity audiences. The choir's Pro Organo CD, entitled Hear My Words, Ye People, features some of the finest choral works from the Anglican tradition. It's proven quite successful and is presently in print and available from Pro Organo.